let's talk about herbs. So you may have herb me talk. Oh my gosh. I'll go home. So you may have heard me talk about herbs once or twice in my videos because I just, I'm a little obsessed with them. Now, when we're talking about herbs, we are talking about the dried herbs as well as dried flowers. And you might be thinking, well, what does a hamster get out of herbs? What does it do for them? Is it necessary for them? And I wouldn't exactly say that you need to feed dried herbs and flowers if it's just not available to you and you can't get a hold of any, it's not going to be the end of the world. But dried herbs and flowers do have a lot of good properties to them. For example, there are certain herbs that can do certain things and help with certain issues, as well as a lot of them have good antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, so it doesn't really hurt to be feeding them. As well as herbs do make good for foraging. In the wild, hamsters are going to come across flowers herbs, different plants, they are going to take them back, they are going to eat them. So it does help with foraging and getting that natural instinct in your hamster. As well as herbs and dried flowers, just they smell really good. So I find if you're adding them into your hamster's cage, it's a natural good smelling thing that can maybe help your hamster's cage smell a bit better. There isn't a ton of research out there with hamsters and dried herbs and flowers. There is only a short kind of list that I know of of herbs that are 100% safe for hamsters. If you ever come across a herb and you're not sure if it is safe or not for your hamster, avoid feeding it until you can find out that it is safe for them. Since there isn't a whole bunch of research on herbs and dried flowers, that's why I'm only going to cover which ones I know of are safe. I'm not going to go through which are unsafe because there could be a whole pile. I'm just not sure. So I'm just going to mention the ones I do know are safe and anything that's not mentioned today, you might need to do more research into it or just avoid it altogether. So the herbs and dried flowers that are safe for hamsters would include rosebuds, candula petals, corn flowers, chamomile, sunflower petals, hibiscus flowers, Echinacea, parsley stalks, raspberry leaves, nettle leaves, dandelion leaves, dill, blackberry leaves, basil, plantain, birch leaves, blueberry leaves, and peppermint leaves. Now, peppermint leaves are one of the more debated herbs, whether or not it is safe or not. You 100% do not have to feed peppermint leaves if you do not feel they are safe, but they have had some positive effects on rodents. So it is said that peppermint leaves can actually help support stomach and intestinal issues. It promotes blood circulation as well as it helps stimulate bile secretions. The concern that a lot of people have with the peppermint leaves is the amount being fed. If it is being fed regularly, it has been found to cause brain damage, but there hasn't been too much looked into it, whether how that affects the hamster's lifespan overall. And I personally would say that you would have to be feeding this quite a bit for something to ever really affect your hamster. Just like a lot of things, if you're feeding too much of anything, it can always be bad, even good things. You can overdose on drinking water. So it's kind of the balance of if you're not feeding it regularly, there's not likely of a chance of it affecting your hamster. But if you're someone who's always feeding it, there is a possibility. And of course, if you don't like hearing these risks at all, you don't have to feed it at all. So how often should you feed dried herbs and flowers? Well, for me personally, I like to do it just once a week. There really is no research on whether or not how often you should feed herbs or anything like that. So I personally just go with once a week. I take a handful and I sprinkle it throughout the enclosure so that it gives Bumble a chance to forage and find the herbs that she likes. Bumble generally does eat almost all of the herbs. Some hamsters don't like herbs and flowers at all. Some will only like certain ones. So it kind of just helps to find what your hamster likes best. But keep in mind that if your hamster doesn't eat a dried herb, it's not going to go bad in the enclosure. It's not going to rot or anything because it is just a dried piece. It's not 
wet or it's not going to rot or anything like that so you really don't have to worry too much if they don't end up eating any of the ones you've sprinkled in so where can you get dried herbs for some reason in Canada and the US, it is a lot harder for us to find dried herbs and flowers. We can't just walk into the pet store and have like a shelf full of them. I guess there's just not a big enough market here for them. But I do know in the UK at Pets at Home, they do have a couple of brands that do sell their own dried herbs and flowers, like the Rosewood brand. You just wanna make sure that the ingredients have nothing you're unsure about. Make sure they're all safe and most of the rosewood ones I'm fairly certain are safe for hamsters. You can also get dried herbs and dried flowers online at little shops. I know there's actually quite a few and I'll make sure to link them down below. You can find one that's located in your area. This is the Star West Botanicals. They have a lot of dried herbs and flowers available um, as well as there are just actual pet brands that sell dried herbs and flowers. I think there's the hay experts who have a variety of dried herbs and flowers that you can purchase as well. So 100% I'm going to leave a bunch of links in the description bar so you guys can go check them out. One last question I want to answer is, I've had a couple of people ask me, can you just use tea bag herbs? Like you just take a tea bag, cut it open and use that. I personally really wouldn't recommend using tea bag herbs simply because a lot of the time they're grinded really, really tiny. And it's better if you're going to have bigger pieces of herbs for a hamster to actually forage for and be able to grab and eat. If they're like grinded so small, there's going to be a very hard chance that your hamster's not gonna actually end up getting any or eating any of it, as well as teas tend to do like mixes. So I personally would just avoid using tea herbs. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video about herbs and dried flowers. I love them so much. They smell so good and a lot of hamsters do enjoy them and uh, yeah. I hope this video can explain a little bit more because I do find I talk about them quite a bit. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Bye! There have been Hi. Why why is this every video that you decide that you are going to be the star?